Hey, what's up? This is Gary from Raz Rentals, and today I'm going to talk your ear off uh, about this brand new NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Secret of the Use VHS 4-pack. <laughs> what an awesomely cool looking box this is. As someone who still buys VHS tapes every now and then, and who actually thinks that VHS cover art looks way better than a lot of DVD cover art, I don't know what's up with that, but like a lot of those old paintings and stuff like that look fantastic on, on videotapes. Like this to me is just perfect. You know, it looks amazing. This four pack was put up for a pre-order back in April of 2022, and I got mine in December. So eight months altogether, not, not too bad. You know, the cost was 150 plus tax and shipping, which uh, shipping is 14.99, which is, man, it's rough. But I mean, this is a big item. So at least I could understand that. Like when, sometimes you buy like a single card to figure off a neck and they're still charging you 15 bucks. You're like, come on, man, that's, that's not right. <laughs> but on the bright side, I got this and the accessory pack. Uh, shipped for uh, $14.99. And uh, just so you know, yes, I'm doing a review of the accessory pack next. In this video, though, I just wanted to uh, focus on this four pack, you know, talk about the turtles, the likeness, the accessories included here, and of course, compare these four turtles to the original 1990 turtles that uh, NECA released. Now, I should start this off by saying that uh, at some point in a past video, it could have been my uh, my NECA or Ninja Turtle wishlist video, I had said that all I really needed for NECA to do is for them to release um, Secret of the Use heads, you know, that you could pop onto the 1990 bodies. You know, I'm cheap and I didn't want to have to pay for uh, four full figures. Um, but once they released this set, you know, I had to jump on it. I had to get this thing. So as I said, you know, I'm going to spend a lot of time taking a look and seeing like, were the four bodies really worth it or could have they have just given you heads? I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, if they've changed anything from those releases to this release. For one thing, I'm hoping they have better uh, hip articulation than those uh, 1990 turtles. You know, maybe if there's not much of a difference with the deco, you could pop off your 1990 heads and put them on these uh, Secret of the Ooze bodies. But, you know, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here, you know. First, I gotta go over the packaging. Now, the cover of this box matches the VHS cover we all had back in the early 90s. You know, I tell you, as soon as I opened up the shipping box for this, you know, and I saw this cover, I grinned the same grin I no doubt grinned way back when I got my original tape in 1991. I ran as quick as I could upstairs to grab the original tape to, uh, you know, compare the cover of that to this. And that's when I made a horrifying discovery. I never replaced my original tape cover. Sure, I had the DVD and I even had the behind the shells making of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Secret of the Use, but no original tape. So I ran back downstairs and I got on eBay and I bought one, you know, because after all, you know, this wouldn't be a Raz Rentals review if I didn't cover everything. I mean, come on. And, you know, what I found very interesting about this videotape was, uh, you know, after years and years of not looking at this cover, uh, I was surprised when I looked at Leo. Like, that is not Leo in this movie. Like, that's a Mikey head with a blue bandana. <laughs> like, the proportions are the same. And even if you look at the spots, like the spots match on Mikey's face and Leonardo's face, what happened to Leonardo's face here? Why is that a Mikey head with a blue bandana? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. The walrus was Paul and Leonardo was Michelangelo. Anyway, let's compare uh, the poses here from uh, videotape to toy box. Now, whoever posed these action figures, I think did a really good job, but there is some trickery afoot here. Um, <laughs> certain things, there there seems to be some kind of um, image manipulation to try to get certain things to look right, which I'm per perfectly fine with. You know, I'm not basing these guys off of the cover of this thing, but, you know, they. I think the important thing for NECA was trying to match, you know, the original tape. So Raph looks good here. Um, you know, there's just minor, minor differences, like the hand position, like that's not a fist, 
you know, if you look at Leonardo, the uh, he's given a thumbs up, and uh, I can't. Is he pointing at you, or is he like on here? He's got his hand on top of Donnie, but uh, and then here you have Donatello with an open mouth. Um, you did get an open mouth Donatello with the uh, the accessories pack, but um, you know because he doesn't. That's not included in this set. They gave him the closed mouth, which is fine. You know. You're not trying to pull any shenanigans or anything like that here. If you come down here, though, and look at uh, Michelangelo, this is where I'm talking about the, uh, you know, the visual effects, because there is no way that you are going to be able to um, bend his legs this way to get him to kneel. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's fine. I, the, the whole purpose was just to try to make it look like the videotape. And I think they were successful in doing that because it, it looks pretty awesome, you know. Even down here in the bottom, it says The Secret of the Ooze. Cowabunga. It's the new turtle movie. And down this one, it says Cowabunga. It's the new turtle figures. Awesome. If you turn it to the side, uh, instead of saying New Line Home Video and RCA Columbia Pictures, it just says NECA and Real Toys, but it still says, you know, there's Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. That's all there. If you look at the picture on the top, uh, this includes a nice group of uh, poses of the guy standing there. It does not match the um, the videotape. If you do go to the other side, it uses the same picture on that side. Uh, let's see what it does on the books here. Um, well, no, it doesn't. That picture doesn't match that either. Although there are certain things about this that look kind of similar to it, like. The way Leo is positioned and smiling looks kind of like how Raph is smiling there. And Mikey is kind of holding his nunchucks up in the air. But they're not, you know, they're not spot on or anything, but whatever. Um, on this side, it says uh, digitally remastered or digitally mastered VHS hi-fi. But down at the bottom of the this new box, it just says NECA Real Toys again. Let's go to the back. Now, when you come to the back here, it is amazing that they did their best to... Uh, try to mimic the uh, the poses on the back of this box. But unfortunately, you're getting a little bit of a dose of reality here because, you know, these guys can't bend their um, legs like that. And to be honest with you, in real life, there is no way that if Mikey was a real turtle and his shell was hard, he would not be able to, to, to uh, bend his leg all the way up there like that. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Now at the top here, though, it has a, has a, a couple of uh, quotes from YouTubers, but there's no quote from Raz Rentals. How can this be? How have my 10 hour long toy reviews not been noticed? Maybe it's because if they try to quote me, it'd be six paragraphs long. I gotta think of something quick, something catchy. All right, NECA, here you go. You can put this on any Ninja Turtle box in the future if you want to. As usual, NECA kicks the shit out of the competition. Why did those other guys even try? <laughs> no offense, Super 7, but I'm trying to get on a box here. I'm trying to get quoted. I do like that it looks like they um, built these windows, like made an actual diorama or something like that. You know, that's cool. As you move down the box, it actually does um, quote this videotape. It says, those heroes, uh, well, this says, those heroes on the half shell are back. And this says, in the half shell are back in an all new movie adventure. Find out the secret of the ooze. As our, as our force, fearsome foursome, as the fearsome foursome, go after the glowing canister that has slipped into the hands of evil, the evil Shredder and his mutant allies, Razar and Toka. Aided by their new pal Kino, the turtles dive into action and pizza. Why did they change a couple of the words? Do these words make more sense now? <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask me. I didn't pay attention in school. And then I went to art school. I didn't have to know English. Are you kidding me? Down here it says, includes extra hands, swords, nunchucks, size, bow staff, pizza box, pizza slices, combat cold cuts, TGRI canisters, forearm, fire extinguisher, and foam bats. All right, cool. Um, over here you have some more nice shots of the guys all standing next to each other. I especially like uh, Raph um, impaling the pizza with his sigh. That was a... That was a favorite part of mine in the movie. And I'd jump over the back of a couch to catch food anytime I could as a kid. 
Down at the bottom, instead of including all the people that worked on this movie, they included the people that worked on these toys. Direction and development, Randy Falk, Trevor Zammett, sculpt Jason Fraley, Trevor Zammett, fabrication, Brody Perkins, paint, Jeff Trapp, Mike Puzo, prototypes, TrueCast Studios, Roger Fernandez, photography, Stephen Mazurik, packaging, Chris Rainbow. All right. So thank you, all of you people, for uh, putting this together. If you want to know what's on the bottom of the box... Nothing. UPC. That's it. <laughs> Before I open this up, I do have to say that I liked how the cover here is embossed. Uh, you know, it's got this nice uh, outline around them because they are sticking out a little further than the rest of the cardboard. All right, let's open this up. Good gravy. Just almost couldn't get it. All right. So there they are. The four new turtles. So once you get rid of the slip cover, uh, the box here has a very nice, very big window, so you can see the action figures very clearly. Um, just when you look at these guys, you, the expressions on their face is so much like the Secret of the Ooze Turtles. So it'll, it'll be cool to see, uh, you know, comparing them with uh, some of my trading cards and stuff like that. One thing that really uh, pops out to me is uh, Mikey's belt. You know, he's got these two holsters for his nunchucks. Those were on the, uh, the 1990 uh, Michelangelo. I think the layout is nice. You know, how they organized all the accessories in between them. You know, it's a little thing, but it's still like, you know, it's got a nice presentation. I mean, we are going to uh, take a very deep look at these guys in a second. But, you know, before I open this up, I might as well talk about the back here. The back of this box is covered in a lot of nice shots of the turtles using the accessories within. Not to mention Mikey swinging around his combat cold cuts. You know, they tried so hard in this movie to not let Mikey use his nunchucks, but I know as a kid, I swung around anything I could to pretend it was a nunchuck. And if if the kill bossy I had was hard enough, you can bet your ass I would have swung it around like a nunchuck and hit my brother in the head with it. Uh, <laughs> I think the shot on the top right is pretty funny, too. Donatello sneaking up behind Michelangelo, getting ready to hit him in the head with a foam bat. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> they should have included a yo-yo. That's another thing. My goodness. Like, after watching that movie, like, you know, I would always pretend, you know, when you would swing the yo-yo around your head and do around the world that you were whacking some people in the face. By trying to make the movie less violent, they were just giving me more and more ideas to make... Uh, toys into weapons all right so that's it for the packaging now it is time for me to uh, open these guys up and uh, hopefully hopefully everything's good and gold with these guys you know so i will talk to you in a second so here they are free from their prison of cardboard and plastic and ready to fight the foot in a way that's acceptable to your mother slapstick Quick, guys, put those weapons down or else Billy's mom is going to write the studio a nasty letter. You know, they actually uh, kick people a lot in that movie, too. Like, they, they're, they're just always kicking people. They never once throw a punch, but they sure can kick really well. At first glance, these dudes look amazing. Uh, but you're not here for a first glance, no. Uh, if you've made it this far into the review... You probably want that Raz Rentals meticulously excessive, somewhat psychotic deep dive into these action figures. So what do you say? Let's do it, eh? Let's do it! All right. First, let's talk about the Ninja Turtle body sculpts. To begin with, they all look fantastic. Um, the muscle groups match how they appear in the film, you know, which is very similar to the original movie, in all honesty. Um... You know, for an example here, if you look at like, uh, you know, Leo's super jacked up leg and then you look at it in the uh, the movie there, you can see, uh, you know, there was a lot of fine detail in the, the muscle groups. One thing I did notice a lot while watching uh, Ninja Turtles 2 for this review is that uh, more frequently than in the first movie, maybe I don't even know if I've ever noticed it in the first movie, you really get to see a lot of stretch marks as the Ninja, Ninja Turtles move around. You know, in the first movie, you'll see people's faces in their mouths. But uh, in the uh, the second movie, you'll see that, like, rubber get a little wrinkly. All of these guys pretty much reuse the same body, but there are a few differences. Um, one, 
Donatello and Raphael here share the same upper arms. You see that little extra muscle right there? That's on both of them. While uh, Leo and Mikey, they have the same upper arms. And yes, in the uh, movie, Donatello does indeed have the more uh, detailed tricep, and so does Raphael, while uh, Leonardo and Michelangelo have the more um, simpler version. They all have different belts, which is, you know, expected. Mikey and Donnie, they both share the same shellback. Raphael also has a shellback that looks just like theirs, except his has uh, some extra cuts and scrapes. And, uh, you know, if you actually look at the film, his shell does have all those cuts and scrapes. And uh, uh, a lot of them actually match this toy, you know, especially this middle segment right here, the cuts and scrapes in there look pretty close to how it appears in the film, except I would say maybe in the film it just gets a little deeper. Um, Leo's is the only one that's different, well, very different from the others, because uh, he has these three segments on the bottom here. Um, and that's how his shell appears in the movie. Leo's scabbards uh, look really cool, you know? Uh, here's a shot of them in the movie. In all honesty, until the original NECA movie action figures came out, I never knew that Don had like these straps in the back to keep the bow in place. I mean, what an impractical design. Like who ties that strap for, for Donnie every time he wants to store his bow? But here you can see those straps in the film. Here's a shot in the film where you can see like that wrinkly, uh, I guess, skin that connects the shell to Raft's back. And uh, here you can see the action figure to see how that all lines up. There's also another shot where, uh, you know, Mikey's jumping in the air where you can get a nice uh, profile of him. And here you can see the toy to get like a good idea of how this uh, scales, you know, with the actual movie. All right, so up next, we're going to talk about the 1990 uh, NECA Ninja Turtles versus these Secret of the Ooze Ninja Turtles. First off... I should start by saying that, you know, just like the Secret of the Use action figures, their bodies are pretty much the same across the four of them, you know, except the heads, belts, and the upper arms, you know, the same pairs exist in those, uh, in that 1990 wave, you know, Donnie's and uh, Raph's match and Leo and Mikey's upper arms match. And just like Secret of the Use, in the first 1990 Ninja Turtle movie, um, their arms do match these action figures. You know, NECA did a really good job of matching the uh, the source material. The only big difference with the 1990 Ninja Turtle bodies is that uh, instead of Mikey and Don having the same shell like the Secret of the Use action figures do, Mikey actually has the same shell as Leonardo. See three segments. But Raph still has the same shell as Donatello, only with the scrapes and cuts. So let's start off with Donnie and work our way through the Ninja Turtles, alphabetical style, you know, the way it should be. Um, pretty much all the, uh, like the body differences from the 90 figure to the 91 figure will pretty much be the, the same, you know, across each turtle. But, you know, there are some specific things that are different, you know, per turtle. So most of the stuff I'll just cover on Donatello and then the other guys, I'll just talk about the unique things. If you start from the top down, obviously these dudes, you know, they all have brand new heads. Uh, I do think the heads on these um, Ninja Turtles are a little smaller than they should be. Like, if you look at this Donatello's head, it looks a lot bigger, like how it appears in the film. This one seems a little small, and even if you look at the heads in Secret of the Use, they just look a little bigger, you know? Like, this one almost looks like... Um, like there isn't a human head <laughs> inside of that head. Uh, one thing I noticed, right, is... a. Uh, if you look at the, the 1990 head, right, you have this little tiny um, lip right here at the base of the head. Uh, you see that in that movie, and in my opinion, it always just looked like wrinkles. You know, to me, it was just a way of hiding up where the, the head attached to the body. If you look at the, uh, the neck in Secret of the Use, lots of times that thing is like, you know, really noticeable, way too noticeable. Like they didn't, you know, go back and fix it or anything like that. But if you look at these uh, Secret of the Ooze Ninja Turtles, they don't have a lip at all. They removed it completely. I think the older eye bandanas were made of a thicker material. Um, they seem a little more durable. These seem very thin and brittle. 
and hard. Like these are softer. The uh, upper torso piece that connects to the neck here, um, those are the same. They're just uh, colored slightly different. The uh, the brand new um, Secret of the Ooze Ninja Turtles, they sort of have like this like light yellowish dry brushing on top of their skin. It makes them slightly brighter, but not by much. It's they're still pretty similar to that uh, 1990 action figure. The front of the shell is different. Uh, not only is it a different color, but uh, also the top of it here is a lot smoother. See how that's rounded at the top? The 1990 Ninja Turtles all had these like uh, sharp peaks right there. I would say that in the 1990 movie, the tops of their shells uh, kind of did have a little bit of a sharp angle. It's just nowhere near as pointy as the NECA action figure. Um, while in uh, Secret of the Ooze, again, it's like, I don't know, it just became softer, you know, much like this action figure. It almost appears like the general shape of this thing is very similar to this, but I don't know. I think it is a brand new piece. I don't know, some pieces, especially down here, looks a, a little similar, but oh well. Um, he has a different belt. Um, you can see that the... I don't know if that nick is... Did I do that cut there? Or was that on the belt? Like, this seems like it has a texture. It's a little more worn. Um, these details right here for the strap aren't as... Uh, I guess um, they don't protrude as much. Where this one, that uh, the straps here for the belt like really, really stick out. But it doesn't have a texture on it. It's all very smooth. Even if you look at the back of the belt, like you have like this where it's attached here. Um, and you even have like where this piece of the belt is uh, uh, under going underneath this part of the belt. That is not on this belt at all. This one is very um, simple. You know, it doesn't even have like, this one has these painted silver rings by the straps. This one does not. Um, if you look at the back of the shell, the brand new thing on the shells is, um, they have sort of like this starburst color design, um, to make it like brighter. That is, uh, very noticeable in Secret of the Ooze. As I said, the upper arms are the same. Um, the spots, uh, for me, like the spots on the arms, like you, you never even really pay attention to that that much in the film. So like... I don't know, this could have had any pattern on it, and it would have made a difference to me. The bigger spot design is, like, down on the legs, because um, in Secret of the U, the spots on their legs are all around the groin region, where the um, the uh, the spots on the 1990 Ninja Turtles are uh, just kind of all over the place. You know, they're not as noticeable. I feel like this is way more organic than how it appears in Secret of the U. Like, in Secret of the U, Sometimes those spots just seem like mechanical or something. Like there's way too many of them. All right, and now we get to uh, one of the big differences here, all right? The elbow pads are different. Uh, the 1991s were a little rougher. They look a little more, um, I don't know, worn. They're a little bulkier and bigger. Um, they're just brown with sort of like a, I don't know if it's like a wash or something in there to kind of bring out some of the texture. Um, and you also have like these um, silver painted rings on the side there. The Secret of the Used ones appear simpler, right? Uh, they don't have the rough edges. They're just very, I don't know, rounded. Uh, but there is a difference where the, the back of the pad is brown and then the actual strap going across the inside of the elbow is black. But it doesn't have any of the finely painted details. I'm pretty sure that that's... Yeah, that's definitely new. I mean, you can tell by the the shape of the actual pads themselves. Um, the next difference is the forearm, right? Um, the forearms on the uh, the 1990 Ninja Turtles were uh, super jacked. You know, they had a lot of muscle definition. And these brand new uh, Secret of the Used ones are very... They're softer, you know, they're, they have a simpler design. Now, this is the special, you know, Donatello forearm with the wristwatch, but uh, they did include a, um, they did include a, uh, a forearm without the wristwatch, but as you can see here, the muscle details are the same.
in the movie, Leonardo's forearms are pretty muscular, but uh, they still gave him the more simplified forearms. I actually thought at first, like, the elbow joints, I don't know, they seem, like, more noticeable or something with the Secret of the Ooze Ninja Turtles when you uh, try to bend them. Like, you really start to see the gaps. Um, where's the other Like you bend that down and you can really see inside of this uh, elbow pad. You can see the peg sticking into the elbow joint from that connects to the pad and everything like that. I thought that the 1991s were better. But you still do have that uh, issue with them. I don't know. I think maybe the, the elbow pads hide those joints a little better on the 1990 uh, Ninja Turtles. Not only has the muscle definition been changed on the forearms, also the straps are very simple compared to the original one. Like these ones actually kind of wrap around, have a little bow, you know, or something. <laughs> Where this one just, is just completely goes around like an elastic uh, strap or something. I believe all the hands are the same. I don't think they made any differences with like their gripping hands and stuff like that. Um, their thighs are pretty much the exact same. Uh, you know, one thing I never really noticed in the film until looking at these toys and then looking at some pictures is just this giant, I don't know if it's supposed to be a vein or a, it's a seam that they tried to make look like a vein in the movie that comes down the inner thigh. Um, you can definitely see that in pictures from the movie. Um, that is still on this uh, Secret of the Use Donatello. Although when I was watching that movie, I didn't really notice that um, thigh. If I have a picture of it, I will show it right now. And if I didn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> the old 1990 Ninja Turtles had like the crappy early NECA hip joints that are very difficult to move. And you fear snappage every time you move them around. Um, you know what? I had um, I never picked up the two packs of the 1990 Ninja Turtles. All of my uh, Ninja Turtles were the from the initial release at GameStop. Did they ever change that? Did they ever give them the good ball hips? Because the uh, Secret of the Used Ninja Turtle, he has the better, brand new, uh, I guess, newer NECA hips that I think work great, you know, because the leg moves around them so freely for the most part. These are actually pretty stiff, though. <laughs> but a lot of the Fred Wolf figures move around very freely. Um, now, I, I've i been having uh, some luck with, like, these guys, I can usually move their legs on, like, um... I don't know, I guess maybe this is the x-axis, and then uh, maybe this would be like the z-axis because it's moving forward you, or towards you. Um, only about that high. The only thing that I really have a hard time doing with these guys, every single one of them this for, from this four pack, is moving it along the y-axis. Like, it is very stiff to try to rotate this around this direction. Uh, if you come down to the knee pads, uh, just like the elbow pads, the knee pads are changed um, pretty much the same exact way. You know, these ones are bulkier. Um, they're rougher. They have like damage, I guess, on them. Um, they have like wrinkles on the insides of them. Uh, there's some painted rings here where the uh, they're attached to the strap. The strap and the front of the pads are brown where the secret of the used ones, the front of the pads are brown, and then the back straps are black. Uh, no extra painted detail, and the pads are simpler and um, smoother. Um, other than that, you know, there's nothing different in the, the, the bottoms of the legs. Those are the same, and the feet are the same. Uh, as I said, you know, there is like a little bit of a, a difference with their color, but not much at all. Uh, all right, so now let's talk about Leo. Uh, pretty much, you know, the same deal. New elbow pads, uh, new front shell. Uh, forearms are different, you know, they're um, less muscular. These are actually a little thinner too. Um, the, uh, the, the details on the belts, um, they're, they're actually the same compared to Donatello. Like, uh, Although, much like, I don't know, I should have mentioned it, but Donatello's belt, uh, 
the uh, the secret of the used one goes down further on his body where the first one you know is kind of up here um this too they extended the belt down to closer to uh i don't know belt level um but it looks as though they kept all of the same details um if you look at the scabbards there are some uh differences here uh yeah some very big differences the way that the it's wrapped the way the ropes attach different spots. Um, one big difference is, uh, you know, Leo sort of has these openings at the top of his scabbards right here in the back. And uh, if you look at a picture from uh, the first movie, I found this one. I think I found this on Turtlepedia. Uh, or maybe it could have been Muppetpedia of Jim Henson uh, standing next to uh, Leo's scabbards. And uh, you can see that those openings are on the back. And you could also get a, a good look at the uh, the scabbards in general. And then come back to the toy here and see how it all matches. Uh, yeah, so those are openings are there on the in the original movie on the back. Uh, for Secret of the Use, they actually put those openings in the front of the scabbards. And um, you can actually see them in the movie. So there you go. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same across the body. Once again, you have the wrinkles on the, the bottom of the 1990 heads that is just completely removed from uh, the Secret of the Ooze Turtle, despite being very noticeable in the movie, um, and just different spot deco. Let's move on to Mikey. All right, so with Mikey, you know, pretty much all the same exact stuff. You know, you got the lip underneath the neck there, which looks pretty good on that head. Nothing on the Secret of the Use head. Um, you know, I do think that the um, the more I look at these upper torsos, the more I do think that this, it looks almost exactly the same. It just looks a little thinner, the, the neck piece here. Um, so maybe the, that is adjusted. Maybe that is a brand new piece. It's hard. Like, it looks smaller, but it also just looks, yeah, because even like the, the details come uh you know they're much more pointy there than they are on this one uh the uh the belt here the front of the belt is actually um like like they did a 180 with it but if you look at the back of the belt the uh the details are the exact same on the back of the belt and as i said the uh the 1990 michelangelo had the leonardo shell where this one has the donatello shell and yes in the 1990 ninja turtle movie Mikey did have a shell with the three segments down on the bottom. And uh, obviously Neck is paying attention here because uh, for the Secret of the Use action figure, they gave him the uh, the shell that Mikey has in Secret of the Use. So that's awesome. Uh, one of the big differences for Michelangelo is, uh, you know, they added these nunchuck holsters on his body. Now these things, they are way too big, you know. And I would imagine that the actor in the movie must have gotten pretty annoyed having to wear these around his belt all the time because you can you can see them in the movie right and uh, you can fit his nunchucks in them so he can actually carry them around which was a uh, something i always kind of wish that they would have had with the 1990 michelangelo just some place to put his nunchucks um so they stick out about that much when you put the nunchuck in there but if you actually watch the movie and you pay attention to it <laughs> I don't believe there are actually nunchucks inside of those holsters. Like, they look like they are just completely closed. Like, they can't even be opened. And Michael, I'll talk about this more during accessories, but Michelangelo never uses a nunchuck once in the movie. I mean, everybody else at least gets to hold their weapon once, except for Michelangelo. And with Raphael, uh, all the same changes, you know, different forearms, different wristbands, different elbow pads, different knee pads. Um, the shell doesn't have these pointy peaks that has the lip underneath the head where this one doesn't really, um, the neck piece looks a little thinner on this guy. Um, although the front of the shell here pretty much matches the exact same except for those peaks. And Raphael's belt is actually the same exact belt. Nothing has changed with the, uh, the belt from this first movie to the second movie it even has the nicely painted uh pins so that you know that's good and he has the same exact scrapes and scratches on his back as the uh, the 1990 Raphael 
Before we move on, I just want to talk about one more thing about the body, and that's articulation. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with the 1990 Ninja Turtles, they have they have the same exact articulation. You know, ball jointed head. Um, the upper torso has got like a ball joint in here, so you can rock them back and forth or try to move them forward. Um, the shoulders here have rotation, and they have a hinge. You have a double jointed elbows, which can swivel on the top and on the bottom. Plus, uh, sometimes you can get uh, more than a 90 degree angle, but lots of times I get stuck on a 90 degree angle with these guys. It gets a little difficult because the strap kind of gets in the way of this bottom joint here. The, uh, the wrists swivel. That's stiff. And the hinge, uh, they, are, they are also hinged. The um, uh, lower torso here can rotate around a little bit. It gets stuck by the, you know, the shell. Um, the hip joints, as I said, are the good neck of hip joints where you can get a lot of movement with these. Um, but as I said before, it's tough to uh, move them on like the Y axis to like rotate them around this direction. Um, and it should be easy because you have two points of rotation around that ball, right? Like the actual covering of the ball can move on that. Plus there should be an extra um, swivel articulation right in here. But both of them seem to be having a little hard time. Maybe the maybe the covering on the ball is just um, getting stopped by the rod. All right, the knee joints here are double jointed. Get down to about there, and then the uh, the ankle joints are hinged, and they have ankle rockers. Now we're going to talk about likeness. Now uh, I went through the movie and I tried to find uh, expressions that matched these heads as best as I could. Not to mention I'll also be using some trading cards if I have to, and some uh, movie magazine pictures. Uh, so I'll be honest here. I think the Turtles and Turtles 1 are, uh, you know, some of the best creature effects we'll ever see in film, you know, maybe even the best. I don't, I don't even know, you know, because uh, they look so lifelike sometimes, you know, there's subtle nuances to their faces and their eyes. The eyes especially, I think, sell it for me, you know, that make them appear like a living animal or, you know, creature. Like, sometimes I look at these shots and I can lose myself in the illusion that these are four, you know, living mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, sure, there's a, a few hiccups <laughs> here and there and uh, some spotty lip syncing, but uh, I don't think we'll ever see anything like it again, you know, because everything is CGI now. Uh, I think that the Turtles in number one are, you know, a practical effects breakthrough, an amazing... And an amazing leap for uh, Jim Henson's Creature Shop. Uh, the Turtles in Ninja Turtles 2, not so much. <laughs> you know, uh, I think beginning with um, the Dark Crystal, Jim Henson was trying to, I don't know, be adventurous uh, with his puppetry. You know, he was trying to create like a believable world with puppets, you know, something that could almost seem realistic or something and he continued to refine more sophisticated designs with the storyteller and dream child and uh, it all led to those very natural looking turtles in turtles one you know like one thing i think about the turtles and turtles one is if you remove the eye bandanas i don't know like in your head if you remove the eye bandanas you can imagine how the head um fleshes out you know like it still seems like a normal shape I think if you look at the turtles and turtles too, the beaks protrude much more from the head. You know, it, they protrude more drastically, and uh, I think there's like some noticeable dipping under the eyes. You can see that little hole underneath their eyes where the people are looking out, and I, I because of that, I think if you remove their bandanas, their heads would be like a weird, warped shape. Their larger eyes make them appear less organic and more cartoony. Um, I feel like when you look at them in that movie, they appear more like more like the dinosaurs on dinosaurs. <laughs> um, 
It may be a, a little thing, but I think their heads appear like too shiny. It could be part of the lighting, and that makes their bodies look even more like rubber or latex. I mean, sometimes in the first movie, like, the mouths don't move the best. But then sometimes in the second movie, like, I don't know, you get weird, weird looks. It's like, especially with Donatello, his mouth is, like, kind of warbly or something. And uh, Mikey sometimes just has, like, this lifeless look. Now, supposedly, Jim Henson personally supervised the designs in Turtles 1. And unfortunately, by Turtles 2... Jim Henson had passed away. And according to Muppet fandom, uh, the Turtles and Turtles 1 were designed by J uh, John Blakely, who uh, worked on the Ultra Gorgon from the Jim Henson Hour. And uh, I think it, it also says he did some work on Audrey 2 in the Little Shop of Horrors. Um, as I said, that's all according to MuppetFandom.com. Now, I tried to look, but I couldn't find any detailed information on who sculpted the Turtles for Secret of the Ooze. Now, I understand, you know, that some people do prefer the heads from Turtles 2, right? So, you know, uh, if you do, like, I'm not going to argue with you and tell you that your opinion is wrong, but if, if you do, you know, let me know in the comments if you prefer the heads from Turtles 1 or Turtles 2. So let's start with Donnie. Donnie, for me, uh, took the biggest hit in Turtles 2. Like, as a kid, I just thought he looked, like, goofy. Like, his eyes looked like they were bulging out of his skull, and his mouth just got weird lots of times. Uh, combine that with a new voice actor, and six-year-old me was like, what the hell is this shit? Um, when it comes to the toy here, you know, I, uh, actually like it more than the movie. I think that they, uh, toned it down a little bit, which is you know, a positive for me. It's like he has the basic likeness, you know, but his eyes are not, they are nowhere near as bulging as they are in the film. Um, and even if you like look at the beak here, if you uh, turn him sideways, like his beak is not as long and kind of weird looking like that. I don't know. Um, as I said before, you know, I do think that Donatello's head should probably be a little bigger compared to the rest of his body. Uh, but, you know, uh, I guess if, I don't know, I guess for the sake of, of trying to make things look cohesive or whatever, uh, if you look at this guy and the head is smaller, this looks more natural. You know, like maybe this is a head that would fit on this body where if you watch the movie, sometimes it kind of looks like those heads are, you know, uh, masks on top of human actors inside of them instead of a uh, uh, natural. So I tried to uh, grab some screenshots of this dude uh, making as close to the expression as this toy as possible. So here you go. Here you can see Donatello in the movie from the front. And uh, here is the toy. Here is a, a profile of Donatello, the toy. And... Um, here is a screenshot from the movie. And here is one more of the toy. And uh, here is the final screenshot from the movie. Up next is Leonardo. And in Turtles 2, you know, they really elongated his beak. Like, they really, you know, made that pronounced. It's, um... Uh, like, sometimes they'll actually look closer to the first movie. I kind of wonder sometimes if they actually used, um, uh, like, the stunt masks from the first film. Because sometimes the faces look similar to the, the original movie. I can never tell, though, what they did. I also think they really, like, made his eye bandana, like, super blue. <laughs> it's, you know, lots of times it looks very full, you know? Like, he's got, like, a, like, long, flowing blue hair. <laughs> So, if you look at the toy, I think they did an excellent job, you know. He's got the longer beak. Uh, he even has that um, crease between his face and the beak, which is, in my opinion, very noticeable in the film. Um, I think his eyes look good. I think they match perfectly the movie. So, let's take a look at uh, Leonardo's face in uh, different angles. Uh, first up, you have a, uh, a front view. Uh, here you can see the movie. And now here you can see the action figure. Here is a, uh, a three-quarter view. 
And um, here is the action figure again. And finally, here is a, uh, a side view and uh, a side view of the toy. Now we're on to Mikey. And, uh, you know, in uh, Secret of the Ooze, I think Mikey probably um, evolved the least. I think lots of times he still looks very similar to how he appears in the first movie. I think he's just like smoother and or streamlined or something like that. So here's the action figure, and, uh, you know, I think NECA made this Mikey look great, you know? Um, he looks just like he should. And you know what's, uh, I didn't really notice it as much with um, Leonardo and Donatello, because the pattern, they don't have a, much of a spot pattern in the middle of their face, but if you look at the spots on Michelangelo's face here, um, it actually matches the spots in the film here really well. Like, you have sort of like these... The constellations of spots in his face match these uh, pictures. And, uh, you know, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but, man, if you look at the uh, the accessory pack Michelangelo had, I mean, that looks just like that. Now, this Mikey face is, is very expressive, you know, which is nice. Sometimes when Mikey, like, opens up his mouth like that, he looks kind of, like, dead-eyed, like there's, like, a soulless person <laughs> in the film. But I feel like when you look at this action figure... You know, he actually, I feel like there's almost something there, you know? The only problem with this Mikey is, like, his eyes are, like, they're always looking up. I f like, you can't be down here. Um, you can drop the head a little bit, but then it just kind of looks, you know, strange for him to be, like, this excited with this big open mouth looking straight down like that. So, you know, I wish they would have painted the pupils or the, you know, his eyeballs looking down just a little bit more. All right, so uh, let's take a look at uh, some close-up shots here. Uh, here is a front view of Michelangelo in the film. And now here is the action figure. <laughs> and, uh, now here is a, a side view of Michelangelo. And uh, here is the action figure. And uh, here is one more of the film. And now here again, is the action figure. You know what I think is really cool? Is that sometimes in the movie, Mikey will smile. And uh, sometimes they can actually even push his smile more so. That he gets like these little dimples at the ends of his mouth. And I don't know, it just seems like such a nice touch, in my opinion. And finally, up next is Raph. Now, I think in Secret of the Use, Raph was like the most muppified or something like that. Like... Like, he looks kind of like a Muppet. Like, I could see him chatting with Big Bird or Oscar the Grouch, you know? I think the original Raph looked very angry, you know, when they needed him to. And when this Raph gets angry, like, he never looks threatening for me. <laughs> like I said, I think this guy would look perfect on dinosaurs. Or even maybe some character that the Fraggles interacted with on uh, Fraggle Rock. Now, I think uh, NECA did a fine job of matching the film here. Here you can see him with his little cocky head cocked to the side. Um, uh, let's see. Some of the spots match. He is kind of missing that little constellation of uh, spots right here uh, in the front of his beak. You can see that. It's like the Triforce. All right, so let's take a look at uh, some close-ups of Raphael in the movie. Uh, here you can see a front view of Raph. Uh, and here is the action figure. Uh, here is a, another view of Raphael's face. And again, here is the action figure. And uh, finally, here is one more of Raph in the film. As well as the action figure. Now, I, like I said, I think that uh, NECA did a fine job of matching uh, all of these action figures. You know, there might be slight differences here and there, but they're just, they're small. You know, there's nothing that's really going to stand out and you'd look at and you'd be like, man, that doesn't look like Raph in the movie. Or like most of them, you look at them and you think that looks just like Donatello and Secret of the Ooze. NECA's brand new Secret of the Ooze Ninja Turtles are just incredible. Visually, they perfectly capture what you saw on the screen 32 years ago. The muscles look fantastic. Donnie and Raph have the correct triceps, 
Mikey has the Secret of the Ooze shell. Uh, they've got a ton of uh, liver spots all over their bodies, and they even have a, a nice scaly texture on their skin. Their faces look great, and I think NECA did a great job capturing both the proportions of their faces, as well as expressions from the film that best suit their personality. Their articulation is good, and uh, you'll be able to get some nice poses, but I kind of do wish that they maybe had a, a bicep cut, you know, bicep swivel, uh, because as I was making these shots, um, I, I kept thinking like some rotation in the bicep really, re really would have went a long way. Their feet are a little narrow, uh, so you might have to work a little bit to uh, get them to balance. Finally, even though I prefer these hip joints, uh, I still haven't been able to get them to swivel, you know, on the Y axis. Their paint looks really good, although their hands kind of have like a chalkiness to them, and their grips are so um, tight. Uh, trying to get the weapons in and out of their hands will definitely cause some paint wear on the handles. I know at least Leonardo, my sword handles are starting to get a little scraped up just from his grip. I think the only Ninja Turtle that really could have used uh, a little adjusting is Mikey, you know, because Mikey's eyes are always looking up. I had the same problem with the original 1990 Michelangelo too. It's just he always looks up, so you have to try to angle the head down. But even when you do that, he still looks like he's looking above people. So the question I asked at the beginning of this review was, uh, do I think NECA should have released uh, four full figures? Or should they have just released a Secret of the U's head accessory set that you could put on your 1990 Ninja Turtles? Well, uh, I don't think the color is that different from 90 to Secret of the U's. Um, the spots may have been missing on the 1990 figures, you know, the way that they, you know, they don't have as many spots on those original action figures. But I feel like that's something you could easily overlook in the film. Well, it's like lots of times the color is a little dark and you barely even notice the spots on their bodies. They do have brand new belts that um, um, match the film, although they could have also possibly included new belts and you could have just exchanged them on your 1990 Ninja Turtles. Uh, the obsessive side of me says, you know, it's amazing that NECA did things like changing Mikey's shell to the Secret of the Use shell and um, adjusting everything else that they had to uh, to make these completely Secret of the Use accurate. I mean, even switching the uh, the wristbands to the more flat, just kind of wraps around their wrists as opposed to the ones with like the, the little bows or whatever, you know, like. I applaud NECA for going the extra mile and making sure that the, all those things are accurate. But my cheap ass side says, you know, you could have gone away with uh, just ads. <laughs> you know, as I said, you barely notice those spots in the movie. And, uh, you know, you barely notice the color difference in the movie of skin tone. And, uh, you know, I, I never would have paid much attention to Mikey's shell. Um, but, you know, when you really get down to it, uh, I like having, I, I like these Secret of the Use Ninja Turtles having their own bodies. You know, you can set them up in their own Secret of the Use section in your display. If they would have just released a four pack of heads, most likely what you would have done is you would have went out and found an extra set of 1990 turtles, put the Secret of the Use heads onto them. I think that this was a good release and definitely worth picking up. I know I, for one, am uh, pretty happy I made this purchase. And now accessories. The accessories in this four pack, and I think two packs, are uh, all great and perfect props from the film. And first up you have Donatello's bow here. Um, if you're wondering, it is the exact same bow that was included with the 1990 Donatello. It's, um, it's actually slightly bigger and I don't know, the brown is very similar, you know, there's not much of a difference at all with the brown. Um, you know, this is nice. I tried to look and see if this bow looks like this in the movie. I couldn't really find any pictures that I had of close, like a close up of this area right here with the, um, with the rope wrapped around it. Out of all four turtles, Donnie actually gets to use his, uh, weapon the most in the movie. Uh, he gets to hit foot soldiers. He gets to, uh, you know, smash Toka with it. And uh, I always liked um, how Donnie, like, rubs the top of his bow like he's uh, putting chalk on a pool cue during the, um, the, the, the raft rescue scene. That's pretty funny. 
So as you can see here, Donatello can in fact hold the bow, but just like all the other Ninja Turtles, uh, the grip is really tight and you might uh, scuff some of the paint off the hands or even off of this bow staff. Uh, one of the problems with Donatello uh, is that his hands, the hands are kind of tilted forward a little bit. So it can be a little tricky, like, I don't know, trying to line them up to perfectly hold the bow. Like, see how his hand is like going inward like that? Both of them do that in that direction. Um, so you just kind of have to work with it a little bit. And no, none of the uh, hands included in the set have uh, uh, vertical hinges, so you can't ever adjust those hands. Now, with the bow, you can store it on his back, but, like, it fits through these strings, but you're going to have to, like, tie it a little tighter than that. I really don't feel like um, <laughs> untying these and trying to get to tie these little tiny knots, but, you know, you can do it. Next up, you have Donatello's Foam Bats. Um, you know, I'm sure you probably already know this scene by heart, uh, where uh, Donnie beats a criminal with this thing. Uh, well, maybe not beat, more like uh, fluffs or poofs, you know. Can we all agree that this dude right here has got to be the biggest wuss in the universe? I mean, have you ever gotten hit with a foam bat? It's like getting hit by wind. So this thing looks pretty perfect, you know. It's got the orange with the black stripe, you know. That's all good. Um... You know, way back in the original 1992 uh, toy line, movie star Leonardo actually came with a foam bat, although it was called the uh, the foot bopper. Look at that. It's even got like a little turtle handle there. Um, so can Donatello hold this deadly weapon? Well, it's tough getting it in there because, as I said before, his grip is just so uh, tight. And look at that. You see that? Got all this green paint scuffed onto the black handle now that I'll have to uh, scrape off. But he can handle it and he can poof, poof, poof people in the face with it. That's good. Next up, you have Leonardo's swords. And, uh, you know, these look great. But unfortunately, uh, my handles are already getting scraped up a little bit from taking them in and out of his hands. Actually, that's not too bad. Um, I must have cleaned it off a little bit. I was getting like green residue from the the paint of Leonardo's hands uh but you know these look good and uh they are actually the same exact swords that came with um 1990 Leonardo the handles are painted a little darker um you can barely see that <laughs> but I assure you they look uh, a little darker than the uh, the 1990 Leonardo swords as you can see here Leonardo can hold the swords and hold them really well. Uh, they're angled out a little bit, which is, you know, can be nice. Like, I don't know, you're not going to be able to get him to hold them straight up because of the way his hand is sculpted. Um, so he always has them angled outward, sort of like he's slicing at somebody. And as I said, you know, with all these Ninja Turtles, the, the grip is so tight, you know, you're going to scuff some paint onto these things. If you want to, you can store Leonardo's swords in his scabbards. They look great. The handles are so big. Now, Leonardo has never been my favorite Ninja Turtle, but I will always think that um, Leonardo makes the best Ninja Turtle action figures because, uh, you know, there's just something so cool about seeing an anthropomorphic turtle wielding dual swords. In the movie, Leonardo holds his swords during the opening battle and most notably throws the swords into the ceiling so he can avoid his enemies and kick one of them in the face. After that, he never uses his swords again, you know. And what's frustrating is during the super cool TGRI fight scene, Leo uses like two clubs or something. Like, why? Where did he get those? Like, Leonardo could slice right through these guys if he just pulled those swords out of his scabbards. Up next, you have Michelangelo's nunchucks. I think these are, you know, pretty nice. They, the handles are the same as the uh, 1990 Michelangelo nunchucks, but the string is different. Like, here it's an actual string. For some reason, it's two strings. And here it's a much shorter, like, wire. Now, you can uh, get these nunchucks into Michelangelo's ha hands just fine. You know, they just slide right in, which is good. But, I mean... That's not movie accurate. He never he never holds these things. 
Not once in the film does he ever hold a nunchuck that, you know, isn't uh, processed meat. So if you want him to be movie accurate, you can uh, fit these nunchucks into his uh, nunchuck holsters here. And uh, there you go. They are uh, stuck into these things. They, like, they fit into these just fine. If you There's holes in the bottom of them, so if you push them down too far, they start to stick out the bottom of these things. You just gotta line them up perfectly. I always thought Mikey's nunchucks were pretty cool, but I guess if you want to make that European money, you gotta cut them out of the film. Uh, although, April does show off her amazing chucking skills. Remember that? That's the only time somebody actually swings around a nunchuck. Was that completely cut out of the film in Europe? Jeez, lady, you better be careful. Uh, you look like you're scared swinging those things around. Up next is... Mikey's Combat Cold Cuts. NECA had to include these here because, uh, you know, everyone, and I mean everyone, remembers Mikey using these to uh, show off his mad chucking skills. Uh, he doesn't actually whack anybody with them. He just kind of throws them at the guys as they run away. Careful, Mikey. You could kill a man with smoked meats. Uh, you know, in the movie, the strings of these things are white. You know, this is just one solid color. But, uh, you know, I really like the details here, you know, like it really looks like how a uh, a sausage kind of, uh, you know, pinches at the end here and then it attaches to the next sausage. Me, I prefer uh, kielbasa. So here's a question to my European viewers. Did these get edited out of the film too? Um, was any was any source of swinging <laughs> two sticks or two long items together? Does that all count as nunchucks? These are kind of soft, uh, but they go in his hands uh, pretty easily. You can swing them around and whatnot. Now, these were actually included with the original movie star Turtles from 1992. Um, well, one of them. And uh, this was called the Celluloid Sausage Nunchaku. <laughs> so, cool. Um, here's, a, here's just a shot of Mikey... Uh, swinging these things around. You know, I tried really hard to look throughout the movie to see if Mikey actually used his nunchucks or not. And uh, so, you know, for the first time, I was really paying attention to just what was happening in the background during the fight scenes. And, uh, you know, here's something I never noticed before, and I've never seen anyone mention. In the shot where Donatello hogties a criminal, you know, ninja cowboy, you know that? Uh, if you watch Mikey in the background, he gets chased by some criminals and then they do the whole thing where like the criminals jump on him, but not really because he stands and watches them as they like either pound air or maybe one of the criminals. Like, I wonder if that was like, if that scene actually exists and it's a deleted scene. Also in the shot where Mikey does the, uh, the around the world thing, you know, in the background, you can see Donnie and he's doing like a bunch of roundhouse kicks, like right in a row on some guy. And, uh, the final thing to mention is uh, I'm pretty sure during this shot, um, Leonardo actually spanks one of the criminals. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Next up, you have Raphael's size. Uh, again, these look fine, and they are the exact same ones that came with the 1990 Raphael. Uh, the paint of the handle just appears a little darker than this one. This one's a little more lighter, you know. Um, Got no complaints here, you know, and uh, Raph can hold them just fine in both hands. You can easily slide them in and out of there. Once again, tight grip, get some paint scuff, but you know, you can also uh, put the sigh on his belt. So that is very cool too. Now in the movie, uh, Raph holds these during the first battle, but uh, he doesn't stab anyone, surprisingly. Uh, <laughs> uh, most famously, his sighs are uh, known in the scene in April's apartment when uh, he uses one of them to catch a pizza. Which is something you can do with these brand new accessories because they included a piece of pizza with a hole there for his side to uh, go in. You know, that's all great. Here you have a fire extinguisher. And, uh, you know, this, of course, was used to turn Toka and Razar back to normal after the turtles got them to eat uh, some pre-fight donuts filled with anti with an anti-mutagen antidote. You know, because of their burping, the Ninja Turtles had to reintroduce uh, CO2 into their system because either, uh, either they needed to do it to speed up the process 
I think it was the speed of the process. I don't remember. It's been, I should have wrote it down. Damn it. <laughs> so, you know, this is cool looking, you know, the details on this are nice. Uh, what's really great is, uh, you got one already with, uh, Toka and Razar. So now you have two, so you can, you know, have one for Toka and one for Razar, you know, that's great. And yes, you can get the Ninja Turtles to, uh, easily hold these and blast the giant mutants in the mouth with some CO2. Um, he's got a pretty good grip on that thing. And if you have a muck, uh, a muck man with a ooze barrel, you could pretend that that is one of the barrels he used. It's a little small, but whatever, you know, it works. It's a, it's a nice substitute. Way back in 1992, they actually did include a fire extinguisher with the uh, movie star Ninja Turtles. Uh, that was called the Flick Fire Extinguisher. Flick Fire Extinguisher. My sticker's all messed up. Um, you know, if you don't include the shields, there was only one weapon included with the movie star turtles that did not show up here, right? Because, you know, I don't count the shields because they're not even in the movie or anything like that. But the one that was with included with the movie star turtles that you got nothing in this set was uh, this yuck, yuck, yo-yo, right? I think, you know, maybe NECA could have possibly included a little yo-yo for, uh, for Mikey to use. So you could walk the dog or do around the world or whatever. I mean... I used to emulate that yo-yo scene all the time, all the time, right? Although I don't think I smacked any kids in the face with a yo-yo, but um, I'm sure some kid out there probably did. Next, you have an active and a disposed TGRI canister. And of course, we've gotten these before with like Super Shredder and I probably Toka and Raza. I don't even remember who else had them, but all I know is we've seen them before and they look perfect, you know? The, uh, the, uh, the paints... The green looks just like the ooze in the movie, and um, the clear one is very nice too. Um, so, uh, anyone know what a TGRI stands for? I'll give you a second. Techno Global Research Industries. And in the comic books, uh, TCRI stood for Techno Cosmic Research Institute. Now, when I was a kid, uh, you know, during my many double feature viewings. You know, I thought it was a little weird how the canister changed from uh, the first movie to the second movie. Uh, I don't even think it said TCRI back then, right? Didn't it just say uh, radioactive material? They never showed the front of it. Um, it's been a while though. <laughs> and um, you know, this is, I think it's actually even, uh, yeah, because it has like that tear and stuff like that there. It's a little different than these uh, Secret of the Use canisters. Um, what's very nice is that NECA also included you a bigger gripping hand so that you can actually hold the TGRI canisters. You will not be able to get them into these tight grip hands. No way in hell. There's not much to say about the TGRI canisters because I'm sure you know it already, right? You know, the Ninja Turtles go to TGRI to learn more about the ooze. Um, and Ta Tatsu and his foot soldiers steal it, and then the Shredder uses the canister to uh, mutate Toka and Razar into the giant mutants that they become. Uh, although I will say one of my favorite things uh, in the movie was whenever uh, Michelangelo headbutted that one foot soldier. That was, that was great. Next up, you have uh, some pieces of pizza, and NECA included quite a lot of pieces here that are uh, partially eaten. I like how they actually... Um, painted the sides of this pizza so you can actually it actually appears like there's pizza sauce underneath the um the cheese can you see that that is a really nice touch and NECA included all these pieces of pizza you know these half-eaten pieces uh because they've always given you like full pieces of pizza and they figured you know what we need to give them some uh, half-eaten pizza so it looks like the ninja trolls are actually eating this stuff um Plus, you got this one full piece with the hole in it that I showed you before. Raph can stick his sigh in. And look at all the cheese coming off the side of that pizza. You know, in that movie, I think that they had, like, triple cheese pizza. Because I've never seen pizza that had so much cheese before in my entire life. And I've wanted so bad to eat some of that pizza. Like, I don't think pizza has ever looked as good as the pizza does in Secret of the Ooze. Next up, uh, NECA gave you a pizza box. This is nice. It's made out of uh, paper goods, some cardboard. Uh, you can open this up. It's got some nice stains, although my uh, my pizza cut lines are not centered. It's 
a little weird. Um, some oil and grease stains in here. Now, in the movie, uh, Kino works for uh, Groy's Pizza. And uh, if you look, the pizza boxes actually have this picture of this uh, pizza chef tossing the pizza up in the air. You come back to the toy, and uh, there you go. Perfection. Next, NECA included quite a lot of hands. A lot. Uh, first, all four Ninja Turtles have gripping hands. They're all the same exact gripping hands, same hinges, uh, same widths and stuff like that, you know. But then uh, you have these like more open palm hands or expressive hands, you know, more like, come on, April, buy us another pizza sort of thing. Um, you have a hand with a bigger grip so that you can hold the, um, the TGRI canister. You get a set of thumbs up hands. Thumbs up. And then you have a hand that sort of has like a, an angled forward grip um, that I think would be good for uh, eating pizza, you know. And then you also have a pair of hands that uh, I think are specifically for uh, Raphael so that you can hold the size and, you know, stab people with them. Oh. The final accessory to talk about is this extra forearm. Now, this forearm goes to Donatello. And uh, I have not put it on my Donatello because I've left the forearm that was included in the box on him because it has this cool wristwatch. You get this little strap you can pull it over. This actually covers up the wristwatch pretty good. It doesn't look weird. In fact, like I hardly even noticed that it's there. Um, but I'm sure if you kept on pulling it open, it's going to like, you know, eventually it's going to get a little loose, maybe hang a little bit above the... The, the watch or whatever but uh you know this uh this cool wrist watch here of course is from the um the scene in the movie when the guys are going to the junkyard to save Raphael, and uh, donatello's like if they were gonna spring a trap it'd probably be right about now and then you know of course they get caught in a trap and now there's only one thing left to do and that's show these brand new neca uh, Secret of the Ooze Turtles, next to the original Playmates, Secret of the Ooze Turtles, the movie star Turtles from 1992. For me, the original movie star Turtles were like a breakthrough in toys. They seemed so cool with their rubber bodies, and at the time I was like, man, those look just like the movie. Now, you may look at their faces now and think, man, they don't look like the movie at all, but I still feel like they, I don't know, they just managed to capture the feel of Secret of the Ooze from way back when. The green of their skin has a much more, um, I don't know, natural tone or earthy tone or something than, you know, the original Ninja Turtle toys we were all playing with back then. They had like the cool uh, scaly texture on their body, painted uh, fingernails and toenails, and just tons of spots everywhere. Tons of spots. As a kid, I had a lot of fun playing with those original 92 uh, movie star turtles. And now as an adult, I'll have a lot of fun setting up and playing with these uh, NECA Secret of the Ooze Ninja Turtles. It's pretty cool to see, you know, how far we've come uh, with toys in the past 31 to 32 years now, I guess. But even if we've come a long way, you know, those original Playmates Ninja Turtle toys are just so appealing and so cool to look at. I don't think those figures will ever go out of style. And I think these brand new NECA Ninja Turtles won't ever go out of style either. I'll have both of these sets on my shelf for the next 32 years if not more. And that's it. Man, I can't believe it, but I'm finally finished. This one took quite a while to put together, but finally it's done. And what's up next? Why? A review of the NECA accessory pack. That's right. I'm going to go over all the accessories from the accessory pack with pictures from the actual movie, like I usually do, you know? Now, there may be another review before that one, but don't worry. It's coming, and hopefully it's coming soon. So, Thanks for watching, talk to you later, and have a good one.